I've talked with so many business owners and they all say the same exact thing, that Facebook ads don't work anymore after the iOS 14.5 update. At the agency I work at called Common Thread Collective, we recently took over an account that stopped working post iOS 14. We were able to quickly turn things around within a month. So the question is, how did we do this? Well, today I'm gonna to be talking about a consistent set of principles that you can apply to any Facebook ad account that is going to help you properly utilize Facebook ads in 2023. Step one is to consolidate your ad account. There is no excuse anymore. You need to have as few ad sets in your account as possible, and you need to consolidate it down. For example, if you still have five ad sets in one campaign, that is far too many, and it's essentially pointless and stretching your budget too thin across too many ad sets. You should only have that many ad sets if your budget can warrant it. Think about it like this. Every ad set that you create is an investment. So if you turn off that ad set next week, then all of the money that you spent into the ad set and all of the learnings that you've gained at the ad set level in the machine learning is going to be wasted. Now, the question you may be asking is, well, what if I have bad performance? Well, if performance is bad, then all you have to simply do is add new ads into that existing ad set. This is better than turning it off and starting from scratch, even though it's resetting the learning phase. And we're going to talk more about the learning phase later in this video. Facebook is even having notifications that are pushing us to consolidate our account. There are new suggestion features such as audience fragmentation, which suggests combining ad sets together. And it only takes the click of a button. This is a clear sign that Facebook is trying to tell you something. Another huge example of this is Facebook's most recent campaign type called Advantage Plus Shopping Campaigns. I just made a video on this. If you're not sure what that is, check it out in the description below. This new campaign type only lets you have one single ad set. And Facebook encourages you to put as many ads within that single ad set as possible. Now, in my opinion, still don't throw everything in your entire account into one campaign blindly. Make sure that every campaign is taking into consideration your product's average order value, your product's margins, and also your break-even CPA that you're looking for to be profitable within that campaign. If your offers all have wildly different average order values, that can potentially screw up your bid in the auction and screw up your CPA that you end up getting. CPA being your cost per acquiring a customer or cost per acquisition. So you may be asking, how do I know how many campaigns I should have running in the ad account? That brings me to step two. If you want to run Facebook ads in 2023, you need to be willing to make an investment. Every ad set that's inside of your ad account needs to be getting the adequate budget to exit the learning phase and optimize within one week. The formula for your budget is 50 conversion events times your cost per acquisition divided by seven days in a week equals your daily budget per ad set. That's not per campaign, it's per ad set in particular. So if you have two ad sets within one campaign, you need to make sure you have enough budget to support both of those ad sets. I think if you really want to give Facebook a fair shot, you need to give it at least five to 10K a month. The more you can spend, the faster you can learn and get your ads optimized. Remember, this is an auction. So if someone is spending more than you, they're going to beat you out if they have better ads. Make sure you do a lot of testing in the beginning to figure out what works well for your brand and then slowly continue to iterate on best performing concepts and slowly improve your performance through better creatives. Don't start running Facebook ads until you actually invest time and effort into creating a strategy for your business. Please, before you start burning money on Facebook ads, make sure that you've done a significant amount of competitive research and target audience research as well. Also, make sure you have enough creative assets that can support a creative strategy that will help move you forward and scale. All right, the next step is about going broad. This is arguably the most important step of all and also a hard pill to swallow for a lot of old media buyers. In the past, you could have tons of interest audience and lookalike audiences to help you reach different types of customers. Now, it's clear more than ever in 2023 that broad targeting is the only audience you should be using. Now, to be clear, that doesn't mean that you can't adjust the demographic targeting such as the age range or geolocation of your ad sets. It just simply means that there's no reason you need to use lookalike or interest audiences. This will also help you with decision making and understanding what's actually working and not working in your account. There are less variables moving around such as, oh, is it the interest audience that isn't working or is it the lookalike audience that isn't working. No, it's your ad creative. Taking a shitty ad creative from a broad ad set and putting it into a lookalike audience is not going to help your performance. This is another feature that Facebook has been shouting at us to start using more often. For example, Facebook now automatically implements Advantage Plus audience expansion. I'll show what this looks like on the screen. It's essentially a button that says that if Facebook sees room for better performance outside of your custom audience targeting, it's going to go outside of it to get that performance. 
This essentially is the same thing as going broad. Now you see where I'm going with this. It's another example of Facebook forcing its best practices on us. In some accounts, this is an optional switch that you can turn on, but in some accounts, it's automatically applied. And in Facebook's new campaign type I already discussed in this video called Advantage Shopping Campaigns, broad targeting is the only option because it's forcing its best practices on you. The only adjustment that you can make in Advantage Shopping Campaigns is your location. Another great example of this that we all know about is every time you enter your Facebook Ads Manager, you see at the top of the screen a notification that says that interest audiences are being phased out. This is because these types of audiences, while they can have decent performance for a very finite period of time, they eventually fizzle out. I want to bring this up because I've noticed that you can absolutely get short-term success from lookalike and interest audiences. I don't want to say that they'd never work at all, but what they are is a depreciating investment. As you invest into these ad sets, they eventually will fizzle out because they have a finite audience. I've noticed these audiences giving brands short-term success for finite periods of time. And the issue there is that you can't incrementally improve your performance. That audience is going to run out. And once that happens, it frankly leaves you scrambling to figure out what to do next. While when you go broad, you have the opportunity for your ad set to infinitely get smarter and actually get better at identifying new customers. What you want to have is a stable, consolidated ad account on broad targeting, where you can incrementally improve your performance through better creative strategy and understanding exactly what's moving the needle in your ad account. Having all these different things things like interest and lookalike audiences are just confusing and distracting and excuses if you can't get good performance on broad targeting. All right, we're going to talk about it. Step four is the learning phase. This is another thing that media buyers worry about way too much. Although it's very important for reasons that I'll touch on, you need to understand that your Facebook ad account is always in the learning phase. And so many people are afraid to ever reset an ad set and go back into the learning phase once you've exited it. However, if you have shitty performance in a campaign, taking a new winning ad that's going to help increase increase that performance and putting it into the campaign is a great decision, even though it's resetting the learning phase. Don't get me wrong, the learning phase is still important and here's why. As we talked about with our budget, you want to get as many conversion events in a week as possible. Specifically, Facebook suggests 50 within a week. I know this is tough, but if your ads are not driving the performance you're looking for, you need to go back to the drawing board and really dial in your creative strategy and make better creatives that are able to drive a higher number of purchases within a week. And I promise you, you can tell before seven days are up, whether or not an ad is going to get through the learning phase or not. You don't need to wait till after you've exited the learning phase and you've burnt all your money to understand if an ad is not performing well and not going to drive the number of conversions you need to exit the learning phase. You can probably tell after around four to five days if this is going to be the case. It takes a tactical media buyer to understand this, make good decisions, and know when to pivot quick in an ad account. I know this part's a little confusing. If you need any more help, leave a comment below and I'll be sure to answer. I could also make a whole video on this, I'm sure. Step five is using post IDs. Your ad social proof being comments, likes, and shares are actually really important and can go a long way to drive you good performance. In fact, the account I talked about that I took over, we had some post IDs and ads that had over 2000 comments on them. Social proof triggers the algorithm and will likely help you get an improved bid in the auction due to your estimated action rate. This being the likelihood for your users to have a great experience with your ad. This is really important to Facebook because Facebook wants to retain as many users on their platform as possible. So if you have a really engaging ad that people are enjoying to the point where they want to comment on it, that's great for Facebook's user base. Step six is try as best as you can to make decisions on a seven day window. This is of course assuming that you're optimizing for seven day click or seven day click one day view. Remember, Facebook functions to get you purchases within a specific time window that you specify. And Facebook does a great job at doing this. If you keep tinkering with the ad account and never truly let the algorithm optimize for a seven day window, then you're preventing it from doing its job effectively. Now, I know this is a little contradictory to what I just said about the learning phase. While you shouldn't be afraid to go back into the learning phase, it's really important to take all of this information into consideration heavily and understand how Facebook works. Understanding everything will help you make better decisions and understand when the best time to pivot is. I try to make all my decisions on a four to seven day window at the minimum. Also, make sure you understand what actions in the ad account will reset the learning phase. If you set your budget any higher than 20% above or below what your daily budget currently is that may reset the learning phase. Also, any changes to your targeting, your ad set, or your ads at all is going to reset the learning phase as well. In general, err on the side of not touching your ad account as much as possible. Be patient, monitor your account closely, and make highly calculated decisions infrequently. All right, we're on the last step, and it is step seven, creative strategy and testing. You need to make sure that you have a very effective creative strategy that touches on your target audience's demographic, their customer profile, and their psychology. Really dig into who your customer is and 
what type of language resonates with them. Seek immense understanding of who your customer is. Ask yourself questions such as, what is the level of market awareness that my customer has in my niche and industry? What's your customer's existing desires that you can tap into through your advertising, placing your product as the solution to their problems? I actually just made a video about how you can analyze your competitor's ads to form a really strong creative strategy. Also check that out in the description below. If you follow this consistent set of principles, you will see better performance in your ad account in 2023. If you're fighting against these best practices that Facebook is blatantly telling you to use, then you are going to continue having trouble using the platform. Thank you so much for watching this video. Leave a like, a comment. If you have any questions, I'll be sure to answer and maybe even make a video about it. And consider subscribing for more content just like this on a weekly basis. Thanks for watching and I'll see y'all in the next video. Peace.